Aloha, and welcome to the latest edition of Telehealth in Hawaii. I'm your host, Vikram Acharya. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Cloudwell Health, an all-virtual leading telemedicine provider based here in Hawaii. We have a great, great, exciting show for you today. My guest, colleague, Reagan Vaughn. Reagan is the Director of Wellness and Credentialing at Hawaii Medical Assurance Association also known as HMAA. Reagan, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thanks for being on the show. It's great, great to have you. To get things rolling, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, your role at HMAA, and we'll go from there. Sure, absolutely. So I'm originally out of San Antonio, Texas. Um, I currently am the director, as you mentioned, director of wellness and credentialing over at HMAA. Um, I really got started with healthcare uh, in college. Um, I was an intern assistant in one of the local emergency rooms, and my interest was really heavy around medical research. So I did that for a couple of years through my undergrad, and then I went into public health uh, right after college, and I got really lucky that I found HMAA right away. You know, I was 22, I moved out to Hawaii, um, I found this fantastic job that allowed me to do something in my field, um, really helping grow the wellness department out there. And I've been there ever since. Yeah, that's a really nice story. What what brought you to Hawaii, being from Texas? Well, who wouldn't want to go to Hawaii sure. from Texas? Yeah. Nice. It, uh, it was really just something fun that I wanted to do. I wanted to get out of my normal space. Um, I loved the environment out there. I'd spent a lot of time in my youth, um, traveling back and forth. Um, I had some connections um, downtown already. So I happened to get into town and it just worked out. It was just meant to be. Yeah, yeah. Now you're the director of, of two departments, two big departments at HMA. There's credentialing, and then there's wellness. Let's start with the wellness. What's a what's a day in the life, for Reagan, when it comes to the director of wellness? <laughs> so <laughs> wellness is really my bread and butter. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to come on with HMAA in 2010 and really start developing their wellness program. You know, at that point, uh, we were trying to meet some of the standards with the ACA, uh, make sure that our groups had the resources they needed um, to start their own corporate wellness programs. So we really started off with things like um, biometric screenings, vaccination clinics, um, encouraging things like healthy eating and physical activity. And over the years, over the last 12 years, it's really just become this really great program where now we are also uh, focusing on things like maternity management, um, colon cancer screenings, and of course, telehealth, mm -hmm. um, which is something we're just super excited to be able to offer to our members. And um, recently, we've also, in 2019, we maintained our NCQA Wellness and Health Promotion accreditation. Um, so we're also very proud of that. Um, but in the ins and outs of the day, we're really just looking to help our members identify areas that they need some extra support in in the wellness um, realm and make sure that they have the resources and tools that they need to make better lifestyle choices and also get access to care when they need it. Yeah, I'm sure, especially um, hopefully coming out of the pandemic, there's a significant need around wellness, um, especially I'm sure folks, you know, there's the behavioral health side where a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of need there, but also around the physical health as well. A lot of people have gone possibly several years without really taking care of themselves, seeing a provider. Are you seeing things like that? Oh, yes. The pandemic definitely impacted everyone and in Hawaii, especially um, the lockdowns were a really trying time for a lot of our members, the local residents. Um, you know, being stuck in confined quarters, you know, a lot of people's gyms were shutting down, their doctors weren't able to do in-person visits. Um, there was also this, just the general concern about, you know, contracting the virus and, and what exposure means to everyone. And um, we definitely think that things like virtual telehealth is something that was just really crucial and 
maintaining care for our members during that time. Yeah. And now there's there's also the credentialing component, which is an equally important part of what you do. Um, walk us through what what is credentialing for for those that may not know, and the, the, how important it is when it comes to HMAA. So all of our providers are required to be credentialed. Um, really, that's just maintaining records, um, ensuring that we have all the proper licensure and uh, the criteria is needed to be part of our network. We check everybody out before uh, we get them added to our provider network. And you know that's something that we do every three years with all of our providers uh, to maintain our URAC accreditation on that site as well. So it's uh, you know checks and balances on, on the provider side and I'm really happy to be a part of that site as well. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, in your day-to-day, -day, what are some of the challenges that you face with uh, really maintaining that high level of excellence that you and the HMAA team deliver on every day? You know, I think one of the biggest things is just making sure that our members and our providers are happy with the service that we provide. And I really couldn't do that without the excellent team that I have. I'm lucky to be surrounded by really great people. Um, my team is fantastic. They're very reliable. We have a really strong attention to detail um, and quality. And, you know, I, I think that's just a really big uh, factor throughout our company is that everyone within we're a family in ourselves and mm -hmm. you know paying attention to quality ensuring that we're giving the best you know service that we can is a really high priority absolutely absolutely so now hma also has a very strong robust telemedicine platform it's called high doc uh, walk us through what what is high doc so HiDoc is our telehealth platform, which is powered by Cloudwell Health. Um, <laughs> we're really excited to be partnered with Cloudwell. Um, so we actually started our telemedicine program. You know, we got started thinking about it in 2016. You know, it wasn't something that everybody was jumping into. It wasn't a heavily utilized um, service at the time, um, but we launched around 2018. Um, joined with Cloudwell in 2021, uh, and really it's something we were really grateful to have at the start of the pandemic, to have an established program to be able to service our members for the various specialties. So, you know, starting out with urgent care, that being something that's really heavily utilized, our members are definitely appreciative of that. Things like pediatrics, um, but mental health care being a new service with Cloudwell under HiDoc uh, has really just heightened the game for us. Um, it's something that a lot of people, in my opinion, aren't rushing out to get care for when they need it. And, you know, there's different stigmas all around, around accessing mental health care. And so I really think that the telehealth aspect of it has really bridged that gap to say, you know what, I know that I need this care and I maybe wouldn't have been excited to go in person right away and, and start that relationship, but through telehealth, I'm able to go in and talk to a therapist and get the care that I need when I need it. And so that's something that I think has just been super valuable as a part of our telehealth program. Uh, I It's my favorite thing to promote any time I'm out talking about telehealth is, hey, you know, you can you can get mental health care on the platform as well. And then just recently rolling out primary care availability as well. Um, it's really also helping to provide access to physicians, especially to um, members that are going to be out on the outer islands. Maybe there's a physician shortage in those areas um, or it's just generally hard to get in person with a physician, especially during the pandemic. It's just been a crucial part um, of our wellness program offerings to be able to, you know, have a backup plan for our members to say, you know, we can get you seen today. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, you have many members who it's very hard for them to access primary care, urgent care because of the significant provider shortages in the state. But with HIDOC, they can get it the same day. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's definitely invaluable, you know, especially with children having pediatric availability on the on the platform as well. Um, I've got two kids myself, so I can 
definitely, you know, stand behind that, that sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night with a fever and all kinds of symptoms. And, you know, it's not necessarily convenient to pull your children out of bed in the middle of the night and take them into an urgent care and ER facility. So I really think that HIDOC and telehealth in general is just a really great resource to um, you know, get that medical feedback and consult on what you should do next. You know, do I need to go to the ER? A lot of the time, there's simple, um, you know, explanations for certain things where you can either wait and talk to uh, your primary doctor if you need to. Otherwise, you can be seen through telehealth and it saves you from spending all that time waiting in the ER, the urgent care waiting room, um, when you really just needed a prescription for antibiotics or, or something like that. So, um, definitely a great, great option to have. Yeah, no question. No question. When you meet with um, your members, do they, these days, is it um, me medical needs and behavioral health needs are pretty much about the same, like what people are looking for? Um, or is it more, more on the medical side? Like what type of feedback do you get, you know, when you meet with, uh, with your, with your members? I think that it's a little more heavy on the medical side, um, but I think that the mental health side is building, um, especially because it's not something that members necessarily thought of off the top of their head. You know, when, when you mm -hmm. think about telehealth, you think about, you know, you've got allergies and flu, you've got um, fever and different kinds of reactions. You need to see, be seen for a skin infection or something like that, but you don't necessarily think, oh, I can talk to a counselor. I can talk to a therapist through telehealth as well. Um, so I think that that really sparks a lot of interest to hear, oh, I have this option as well. And we've really seen that build the program over the last year or two. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's probably, you know, right now when you meet with members, they're probably like, you know, it's, it's great that you have uh, mental health, behavioral health services. May not have thought about it, but now that you mention it, I'm, you know, both are of importance to us now. Absolutely, absolutely. And the feedback that we've gotten from members who regularly use um, the mental health aspect of the program mm -hmm. is, you know, very positive. They love interacting with their therapists. They go attend regularly. They're not missing sessions um, and they're really getting all of the positive aspects of finally receiving that care that maybe that they've been ignoring until now. Absolutely. You know, when you, if you were to look um, about three to five years down the road, do you foresee more and more utilization of programs like High Doc to advance telehealth? What, what are your thoughts on that? I definitely think so, especially among the younger generation. Um, you know, I, I think that people in their early 20s and their 30s, you know, growing up with technology, having access to everything in the palm of your hand, um, and just the general busyness of everyone's schedule, having um, direct access to a physician without having to wait two weeks, you know, that's something that really speaks to a younger generation as well. So I think that um, as this is just the norm, you know, as we go over time, it's really going to pick up because we're also going to see populations that wouldn't normally get a regular annual checkup with a physician uh, start utilizing it more because it's easier to access that care. Uh, you know, they can do it from the comfort of their home. You don't have to take off work to go to the doctor anymore. You can be seen on your lunch break. You can be seen after work. Um, so I think that accessibility is going to play a huge role, um, especially in, in that younger generation getting used to being seen this way. Yeah. And a lot of people were sort of introduced to telehealth during uh, really the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so like I said, now that they're more familiar with it, you know, we find that once people use it for the first time, there might be some uh, hesitancy in the beginning, but once they use it, they really like it and they inevitably come back. Yes, I, that's what we've seen on our end as well, is that usually if somebody comes into the service once, they're going to enjoy it and they're going to come back and use it again when they need it. Yeah. Now, shifting back to wellness, there's a lot of just um, higher, higher rates of diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure, you know, higher rates of chronic conditions, uh, especially in Hawaii. 
you know, mm -hmm. as part of your uh, wellness leadership role, what types of programs are, are available uh, for members to access when it comes to some of these chronic conditions that could be pre-diabetic or they may have diabetes? What, what's available to them? Sure. So we work on multiple tiers with chronic conditions and chronic conditions are really something from a wellness perspective. And I think that most wellness programs can attest to this is you really want to hone in on those risk factors, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. preventing comorbidities from things like diabetes, hypertension and high cholesterol, you know, we're going to we really want to prevent those from developing into things like coronary artery disease and congestive heart failure and stage renal disease. You know, we really want to stop the train there. Um, so what we do is we have different levels. So those that don't really have any risk factors, but they know that their um, behavior, their lifestyle choices aren't necessarily the healthiest. Um, we have the standard wellness programs that promote physical activity, healthy eating, getting regular checkups with your physician, um, that kind of baseline wellness care. And then we build up from there. So if you are pre-diabetic, for instance, um, we've got some digital resources that you can use to kind of step back your risk factors, get some um, education on, you know, ways that you can just really improve your health, even in the slightest ways that are gonna help you prevent from developing things like type two diabetes. Um, we also have partnerships with a bunch of really great vendors, um, you know, like HiDoc and Cloudwell. We also work with several pharmacies um, who do diabetes education, that sort of work. Um, and then we also have uh, disease management programs for those who are diagnosed with the uh, conditions and they need some little, a little bit of extra help um, reaching their goals, whether that's medication compliance, regular testing, um, following up with their physician on a regular schedule and things like that. So we've got nurses that are available to um, assist with those types of things. But as I mentioned with our telemedicine program, uh, we also are able to refer them to speak directly to a physician and get some consults on things that they should do uh, directly from a medical professional. Yeah, yeah. So the nurses, are they more, they, um, they're like coordinators for patients? They help coordinate the patient's uh, wellness progress and trajectory? Yes. So every member who has a dedicated care plan based on the risk factors they have, the conditions and, and comorbidities that they have, um, and then their registered nurse will work with them on at least a monthly, more so depending on the case uh, basis in order to make sure that they're reaching their goals. Yeah. Now, we're often asked this question a lot, and I'm sure it's the case with HMAA too. Because we service all the islands, it makes it great, you know, especially for those that might be on specific islands where the provider shortage is even increasingly acute. And so mm -hmm. I'm sure you get that feedback also from the HMAA side. Like, look, you know, thank you so much because I don't have a lot of providers on this island, but I do have a smartphone and I can access HiDoc. Absolutely. And, you know, really making sure that we have something for those Outer Islands members. We don't want to leave them in a position where they have to travel to Oahu in order to access care. Um, and a lot of uh, members out on those Outer Islands can, you know, attest to the fact that sometimes that is the case. You have to leave and come to Oahu to get care or be seen for, for certain specialties. Um, and so it's really great for HIDOC to be able to say, it doesn't matter where you are, you know, we can definitely help you. And, and in most cases, it doesn't matter what time it is, um, you know, we're always there for you. So you can access care whenever you need it. So yeah. yes, those, those outer islands, those rural areas, we're really pushing it in those populations to let those members know you have access to this program and it's not going to take weeks for you to be seen. Yeah. Yeah, you raise a good point. It's having care for the outer islands, but also because the service is essentially open, essentially almost all the time, mm -hmm. that they can, you know, whether if it, if you would like primary care at nine o'clock in the evening, you can receive it. Right. Mental health sessions, you know, based off when you're free, because many people obviously in the service industry, for example, it's hard for them to be mm -hmm. able to take time off. And like you said, go to the doctor or go to your therapist, whereas you know, if, if that's the time that works for you late at night, very early in the morning, 
then then it's available. Absolutely, care on your own schedule, and and that's really what we all need. You know, a nine to five uh, availability doesn't work for everybody. Uh, and you know, sometimes things pop up, and you need to be seen sooner. You don't have that time to wait. Um, so yes, having that constant, near constant availability is priceless. Yeah, yeah. And now, if you were to start to think of other ways in which down the road, high doc, something like high doc, can be used, you know, where where would you try and, and try and position it in terms of some new potential ideas? So kind of stemming off of, of the chronic disease topic, um, I think that's a population that we'd really like to be able to continue to hone in on and provide additional remote monitoring. You know, it'd be really helpful for not only the patient to understand where they stand with their condition, but also for the physician that's monitoring their condition to get regular you know, live updates, especially if somebody goes into a diabetic crisis. Um, sometimes it would be really great for members to have a care community who is also aware of what's going on with them and can reach out and say, hey, you know, we noticed that this is going on with you or maybe the member calls in, you know, to the physician and they are like, yep, we already see your results right here. Uh, you know, full access, full transparency between patient and physician, I think that would really help with, you know, stepping back those risk factors and, you know, properly maintaining um, those conditions. Yeah, uh, that's, those are, those are great, you know, long-term steps. That's great vision. So in your spare time, <laughs> when you have it, you mentioned <laughs> you have a family, you have young children on the, oh, yes. side, tell us, tell us a little bit about, about Reagan's family. Oh gosh. So I have a 11 year old son. Um, he is in sixth grade. So we're getting exposed to all of that middle school, early teenage, you know, tween years. So that's exciting. He's in football right now. He loves basketball and baseball, video games, of course, because what yeah. sixth grade boy doesn't love video games. Yeah, um, and then I also have an eight year old daughter. Uh, she's currently in third grade and uh, she's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. She goes to um, startup business classes. So she's learning how wow. to design her own company and she loves gymnastics and she's just a great personality. And yeah. she loves um, also being part of this type of interaction. Uh, she was lucky to be able to be part of one of HMAA's uh, news segments on the COVID early in the pandemic. So she's... <laughs> She's got a good drive for business, which is really funny from an eight an eight year old's perspective. But yeah. um, they're great. You know, we spend all of our time together when we're free and really just enjoy each other. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm same same on my side. It's like being able to, you know, the the kids when they need medical care, we've accessed you know telehealth and. Mm -hmm they really respond to it really well. They're like, wow, I don't have to go in. We don't have to go into the doctor, mommy. Like, daddy, I can do it through the computer. And we're like, yeah, you know, you yeah. And it's like a full on visit. It's really a lot of, and they, they're like fully engaged. I mean, they answer the doctor's questions. They participate. I mean, it, it really is, like you said, in the years to come, the new, the new mode in which. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, and they're already yeah, used to talking to everybody through FaceTime yeah. and video chat. You know, you, you interact with grandma and grandpa this way. You also get to interact with your doctor this way, you know? <laughs> so it's great. And yeah, they pick it up really quick. Yeah. Um, any types of great stories you want to share on the high doc side of uh, grateful members or happy members, you know, people who really uh, tried the service for the first time and really enjoyed it? You know, keeping in line with the family perspective, um, some of the best feedback we get is around families. It's, I was up in the middle of the night, my child had a fever, they were throwing up, I didn't know what to do, I didn't wanna pull them out of bed, I didn't wanna drive 30 minutes into town, I didn't know what the wait was gonna be, and they were able to get in within 30 minutes. Late at night, mind you, um, I believe it was sometime after midnight that uh, they called in and 
they were able to get a prescription, pick it up the next morning and, you know, everything worked out great. So I know that the adults are loving the service as well, but I think it's extra beneficial when we know that that's trickling down throughout the family. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. To know that it's not just adults who could use it, but children as well. You know, yes. that's, that's a great resource, especially for busy parents. And mm -hmm. I suppose that in the middle of the night, it can be very hard, very stressful. You can't mm -hmm. leave uh, some you know, children at home when one has to be driven to the hospital. You know, that's, absolutely. That's, and, that's hard to do. Uh, on the other hand, telehealth was, you know, I, I know we talked about the pandemic, but it was vital for the pandemic, especially when exposure happened in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we did see is that we would get calls from clients and they would let us know, um, you know, obviously we, we assisted with, with COVID testing early on as well, doing pop-up testing clinics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but when it came to exposure with certain employees, we were able to say, you know, if anyone has questions, concerns, they need a, a a note from a physician in order to go get tested. Uh, they were able to call in HIDOC and all of their employees were able to talk to a doctor, evaluate their risk, discuss exposure, identify ways to get tested. Um, so that was a really great resource to have mid pandemic. Um, returning to work and that sort of thing as well. Um, we were able to just make sure that the members felt comfortable. They were cleared by a physician to say, okay, well, your exposure was something to take serious. You need to go ahead and, you know, sit out for one to two weeks, or, you know, your exposure wasn't direct. You're in the clear, you can return to work without any concerns. Yeah. Um, so I will say that that was another really big benefit to telehealth, That's just right. accessing that medical feedback around COVID. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's, these are really excellent points. You know, it's, um, we're on the heels of uh, telehealth awareness week and we've spoken, you know, it's been a great conversation with you about the benefits of telehealth, but I really want to personally thank you. Um, not only for being on the show, but the tremendous partnership that and successful partnership that we've had with Cloudwell Health and HMA working together for the residents of the state. And it's just been an, an excellent collaboration. You, know, you, you do a tremendous job and it's just great to see so many members who are patients well taken care of. And it's just really been a great partnership and ultimately members and patients have really benefited from it. I wanna thank you, I really appreciate it. Absolutely, and you know, that goes both ways. Um, it wouldn't be successful on our end if Cloudwell didn't put such high quality into their service. Um, you know, hands down, y'all do a fantastic job of, of assisting our members. Uh, you know, the access to care, the assistance between your call center and your physicians, the follow-ups after the consults, coordinations with the pharmacies, um, you know, we couldn't be successful without the high quality of work that your team puts out. Um, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you, Reagan. And Absolutely. We appreciate you being on the show. And thank you for everything. And mahalo for your time. It's great Absolutely. to see you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.